In 2007, musicians Glenn Hansford and Marketa Urglava teamed up for what was supposed to be just a small independent film called Once, a project which ended up becoming an Oscar-winning hit. In addition to starring in the film, the duo took home the Oscar that year for Best Original Song. They are out now with a much-talked-about new CD called Strict Joy under the band name The Swell Season. Before we get to that, from the Grammy-nominated Once soundtrack, here they are performing When Your Mind's Made Up. Marquetta, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. And Glenn, nice to have you on as well. Thanks, Tavis. I tried to just give a little taste of this Disneyland sort of story. I mean, you come together for a little small project and all this Oscar madness happens. Take me back a few years ago and how all this, tell me how this came to be. Well, my friend John Carney, who used to play bass in my band, mm -hmm. uh, had been playing with the idea for many years of this he wanted to make a busker film, which was roughly, I suppose, based around my experience because mm -hmm. I was a busker before I met John mm -hmm. and had come to me a few times and interviewed me in a very, you know, relaxed way, like having a cup of tea, be like, mm -hmm. so tell me a little bit more about busking and, you know, what would your average day be like or, you know, and I would tell him, like, I would give him anecdotal stuff and he wrote a script that he then went and got some interest in uh, from, from local people. And he had Killian Murphy, this uh, very famous Irish actor who was going to play the part. And that was kind of his ace, because this actor is like a, you know, he's a big deal mm -hmm. in Ireland. And he was looking, you know, so the project kind of, the project grew legs. And uh, he was looking to, ca he was got, got to the point where he was casting and he wanted me to write songs for him, which was great. I was very happy. Mm -hmm. And he was looking for a, an Eastern European piano player. Uh, she wanted to, he needed a girl about 35 years old. And... Uh, I knew Mar, I knew Mar from, from being in Czech Republic, I knew Mar's parents. And I said, I know a girl, and uh, myself and Mar have been playing together a lot, you know, playing mm -hmm. gigs and stuff in, in Czech. And so I know a girl who, who could, could possibly be fit the bill, but she's only 17, uh, but she's brilliant. And, uh, and John was like, well, let me see her. And so myself and Mar organized a gig and we played in Ireland. And he came to see us and he cast Mar in, as the female in this film. So he had Killy and then he had Mar and it was like, and everything was moving ahead and I think he'd like, to get a million dollars. Someone was going to mm -hmm. give a million dollars to make this film. And then, to make a long story short, Killian pulled out about, you know, a month before we start shooting, which destroyed the project because the money got pulled. Of course, the producers weren't interested anymore because that because right. Killian being the star. And so John then had to kind of quickly rethink the whole situation and was so happy with the script he had and was so happy with the songs and was so happy with Mar that uh, we had to rethink. And he, he said, why don't, why don't you play? It just it seems obvious that you play because you, your connection with Mar is quite real and these songs were written with Mar, so why don't we just... It almost was like, he said, it's almost like a blessing, mm. weirdly. Why don't you come in and play the role? And, uh, and I guess, you know, I, I, I panicked with the idea for about five minutes. <laughs> I was about to ask, you, were, yeah. you weren't intimidated by that? You have a huge star. Yeah. That's like me filling in for Denzel or something, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean, you, you didn't have any intimidation about this at no, all? No, I did. I, I, I did. I, honestly, I was freaked out. And, uh, and I just thought, like, I, I don't know if I can do this. I don't, yeah. I don't want to let him down. My biggest concern was letting him down. Right. Letting, you know. But uh, so I, I agreed to do it. Mara actually encouraged me to do it. She said, you know, because be, she, she said it'd be a lot easier to act with someone I know rather than mm -hmm. someone I don't. So we went and we made once. And we had to find more. We had to find money. And John borrowed 120,000 euro. Uh, apart from the Arts Council in Ireland and apart from a few friends that he knew. Right. And we made once in three weeks on, uh, on two handicams. We, di we didn't get any licenses. We shot it all illegally. <laughs> uh, it was, uh, the whole thing happened in this very simple way, like 17 days of shooting in Grafton Street in January. It was freezing cold. Uh, the script was basically very organic in that it was happening as we were going. John mm -hmm. had a very clear idea what we, what we wanted to do, but he was letting us improvise. And, and what ended up happening was that lovely thing where necessity made the film. Yeah. We, only, we, ha we only had the crew, because everyone was working for free. Sure. And we only had the crew for X amount of time, uh, and everybody just pulled together. And it was one of those great harmonious things that happened where the film ended up being this beautiful, simple thing yeah. as a result of everyone's energy. You know? So I've been trying to tell these guys for six years now, if they work for free, it can be a lot more harmonious. <laughs> You get a lot more done, might win some awards around here <laughs> if they'd only work for free. I haven't convinced them of that as yet. Uh, but but, but uh, since he calls you Mar, uh, Mar, what do you make of the fact that you get recommended by your friend and all this just opens up for you? I've, I feel blessed, honestly, because yeah. I, I never grew up with, it, with an idea of, of, of being a professional musician or mm -hmm. for that to be something I do for a living. And 
And when Glenn walked into my life and kind of invited me to, to share the stage with him, um, already that was amazing for me. And I used to kind of, um, at the time, even when I made the film, I was still in school, you know? Mm -hmm. So for me, any excuse to get out of school and play music was, yeah. was just brilliant. <laughs> so I, I used to um, feel so grateful and fortunate for, for, for the fact that I, I can play music and, and, and travel with Glenn. And, and then when the whole, when the film happened and all the success, it just feels, I, I definitely think that there's there's got to be some amount of magic involved, otherwise yeah. it w couldn't have happened because it, it was so fortunate and I feel really, really blessed and grateful for the That's way things have gone. That's why I said Disneyland. It came together Absolutely. like a magical story. Um, where's, your, where's your award? Where do you, where do you, where do you keep it? We actually got our parents over um, for, for, for the Oscars and, yeah. and uh, they were leaving day after the, the ceremony and, and just took the Oscars with them. So, <laughs> So yes. you win it one day, and your parents take it home the next exactly, day. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. We so got to have them in the in the bed in the in the hotel room for one night. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so tell me about the about this new project, the Swell Season. First of all, the name of the group that you front, the Swell Season. Where did you get that, you get that name from? It's a Czech writer, uh, Josef Skoretsky, who who wrote this amazing book called The Swell Season that we were both reading when we recorded these songs, mm -hmm. and uh, it was just Mar wrote this beautiful instrumental piece for for the record and. I remember we were, we were both reading the book, and whenever I wasn't reading it, she'd pick it up and she'd read it. You know, we were kind of reading it between us. And uh, so we named that piece in music The Swell Season. And then it just sort of seemed to make sense to name the record The Swell Season. Mm -hmm. And then when it came time to go out on tour with After Once and everything, we, we kind of thought, well, maybe it's not so, you know, I, do, I, I just didn't feel so comfortable about going out as Glenn Hansard or Marquette or Glover. Mm -hmm. It just sort of felt a bit, you know, I don't know why. I, it probably made more sense in a lot of ways. So we decided to call the band mm -hmm. the Swell Season. So, uh, so I guess it's kind of now a project band, or like a, you know, uh, for me certainly, it's I was in a band called the Frames for a long time, and now this band is like a new thing. Other than the fact that you love the book, does that those three words, the Swell Season, does that say anything to you? Oh, or should yeah. it say anything to us as fans? Yeah. Well, actually, for me, I mean, if, you know, like Mara just said there. It's been an amazing season, you know. Certainly in my life, it's been an, it's been an incredible. From the moment this in, of meeting Mar to, to this has been a, a, it's been an amazing. And it's 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 almost like sometimes you invite someone into your life and without realizing it, they open the pathway that you were looking. I mean, I was in a band mm -hmm. for 17 years, struggling, trying to get, you know, trying to get my band name out there, trying to work, mm -hmm. trying to get things happening. And then when I met Mar, she has this incredible sense of just ease. Everything about her, she just she's not looking for it. And it's, if you think about the idea of the muse, or think about the idea of, of you know, the precious muse comes, it's, it's, it's a shy thing, fame, like this mm -hmm. whole idea of success. Mm -hmm. Success is like a shy bird. It won't come to you if you chase it. If you, I, mean, mm -hmm. you, I mean, you can work for it, yeah. but, when you, but when you're running after it, it's just going, going away. Mm -hmm. And Mara kind of came into, when Mara came into my life, she had such a stillness about her that it, the fortune or the sense of muse just came right down and landed right there between us and, and I feel very much like that was an incredible turning point in my life you know so very much a swell season. Okay tell me about the, about the project itself. Uh, well what's, what's, what's really nice about it was uh, that after the success of Once we were trying to um, we were playing much bigger rooms that we played before and we mm -hmm. were trying to make you know we, we felt like we needed the gig to be more dynamic uh, therefore so we thought of, of bringing some, some more people musicians on board with us and, and then it just seemed to make perfect sense to why not bring the voice from the frames which is the, the ba Glenn's band mm -hmm. and um, so we all came together on this record because up until then it's been kind of separate projects you know the frames and, and me and Glenn playing together and this record is kind of the combination of the two for, which for me is, 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 is a nice thing because it, it brings more dynamic to it, 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 it um, and and I think the, the frames are just brilliant musicians so um, and as well, we, we went into a, st a studio that we've never been before, so it was it was a new experience. And Peter Cadiz, who recorded the album, is, it was it was just got it immediately. And and what was the nicest thing about it for me was that uh, when we went into the studio, he he lives in this big house in in Connecticut, Bridgeport, and uh, par half half of the house he lives in, and the other one is the studio. And there's a big kitchen, uh, and a, and for me that was amazing because because I love cooking and. I just went into the kitchen every night and cooked dinner for everybody and for me that was a nice way of, of making the experience kind of like I felt at home then you yeah. know. The, the you can hear that on the record, I mean Mars cooking is amazing. <laughs> you can so hear her cooking, her, her <laughs> cooking on the record. You can hear it, it's, it's, it's in the music, it just gives everything yeah, a sort of sense of groundedness. And I, 